Hello. Uh, so welcome to the class. So dear net aspirants and uh, dear students. So this is the first class to of our online net coaching for physical science for CSR examination June 2021. And uh, this class in this class so we'll talk about uh, the different subjects like classical mechanics, quantum mechanics, electronics, electrodynamics, and all other topics so will be covered here. So this is the first class and in the first class I am going to discuss about the classical mechanics. So for classical mechanics today will be the first class and uh, after this class, after this class, after few class, okay, then again we will start quantum mechanics and electrodynamics and, uh, and the other topics. So let us talk about this class. So now see in this online class, in this online classes, so we will basically, you uh, know, uh, for from the uh, application part we will see the problems uh, uh, for different uh, examination like CSR examination, GATE examination, GIST examination, TIFR, bar examination and we will try to solve this pro those problems and also we will try to gain the concept behind those problems uh, in very deeply okay so once you have the deep knowledge about the topic then you can if you understand those uh, concept then you can easily solve out the problem in your examination so let us see directly the first uh, class will be classical mechanics and this is the first class that is where where i've written here one okay so now see in classical mechanics actually there are two branches like newtonian mechanics one is newtonian mechanics and another is you know lagrangian dynamics okay lagrangian dynamics now see first of all why do you need this classical mechanics i mean a lagrangian formulation okay then all hamiltonian formation why do we need so you see that the problem which we will discuss here using the lagrangian formulation the same problem also we can discuss by newtonian mechanics now the thing is that so let us take a problem directly we will discuss uh, uh, starting from a problem okay let's see so if i give you the problem that so this is a simple pendulum having length of the string is l and its angular displacement is theta and the mass of the ball is m now if i give the question that find the time period of this pendulum <coughs> Find the time period of the simple pendulum. This is a simple pendulum. Okay. Now, what will be the before knowing this classical manner or Lagrangian formulation? So, what we did in earlier case in lower classes, we uh, did that we used the Newtonian mechanics. And see, in that case, we tried to solve like this. Na? I go, okay, what are the um, net force acting on the bob? These are the one is mg downward, another will be you know tension in the string okay and if i say if i draw a parallel line so this angle will be theta and this will be your t cos theta and this uh, if i resolve this this will be your t sin theta right now and and we say that this t cos theta will be counterbalanced by this mg force and because of this component t sin theta this is nothing but a restoring force Restoring force that why that is why it will come back to the equilibrium point. See the thing is that whenever you use the Newtonian mechanics now that Newtonian mechanics is a vectorial approach always we talk about the vector uh, we resolve the um, problem using the vector analysis. So it is a vectorial approach so, but in uh, Lagrangian formulation you already know that Lagrangian is nothing but your L equal to L equal to T minus V. What this T? This T means your kinetic energy and this V is your, you know, that potential energy, right? If this T is a kinetic energy and V is a potential energy, now tell me one thing, that kinetic en energy is what? Whether it is a vector quantity or a scalar quantity. This is a scalar quantity, right? So, when we solve out the problem using the Lagrangian formulation, it means we are dealing with the scalar quantities only. But if you use the same problem using Newtonian mechanics, in that case we have we use that uh, we resolve the forces. Then four is a force is a vector quantity. Okay. So what I can conclude here that Newtonian Newtonian mechanics 
you can write down also newtonian mechanics mechanics is vectorial approach is vectorial approach where the same thing the lagrangian dynamics lagrangian or classical mechanics let us say that classical mechanics classical mechanics is scalar approach scalar approach right so this is the main difference between the uh, newtonian mechanics and lagrangian mechanics okay now see another difference another advantage of lagrangian mechanics is that whenever we say that l equal to t minus v so what l t means your uh, kinetic energy v means potential energy now that principle of least action you already heard about the term that principle of least action or Ham, uh, hamilton's principle okay did all this you know hamilton's principle you see that our all the natural phenomenon all the natural phenomena nature always try to extremize its work okay nature works in the most economical way right now if i say that lagrangian if i uh, they formulate the Lagrangian of a system. What it means kinetic energy minus potential energy, right? What do you mean this kinetic energy? Kinetic energy, what is the meaning of this kinetic energy? Kinetic means something is happening, right? Something, it is a dynamic, dynamic, uh, you know, variable. So something is going on. That means something is happening. So this physical significance of this kinetic energy, you can say in language that uh, what is what is happening right what is happening but the what is the physical significance of the potential now if i say that, that you have the potential to crack the csi net exhaustion what do you mean by this sentence that means you have the capacity the maximum capacity you have that will represent the potential of you Okay, so you have the potential to claim this, you know, that uh, 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 this road or something like this. So that means you have the maximum, the maximum capability. That means what, up to what extent you can do, and means of what happened. So that is why that it can say that what may happen, what may happen. So in language, you can say that a potential energy means what may happen. And the kinetic energy means of what is happening. If you take the uh, you know difference between these two terms, what it means? That means that always come about that T minus V. This T minus V represents your. It means that means L equal to T minus V represents your activeness of a system. Activeness of a system. Okay. That means this L equal to T minus U, what is happening and what may happen, this difference give rise to the activeness of any physical system, right? Now we heard about this integral that L equal to L uh, dt, delta L dt from initial time Ti to the final time Tf that is equal to zero. I hope you got this relation. What it means since L represents T minus V represents the activeness. So this integration from initial time T I to uh, T F, it integral, this integral is called your, you know, that action, action integral. Action integral. And that this action integral, derivative of this function, if the derivative of this function is equal to zero, if you equate it to zero, what it means? That means you are, Finding the extremum value or minimum value, right? You are finding if a function f of x is given and if I equate that f prime x is equal to 0, that means you are trying to find out the maximum or minimum value, right? So, this if I consider this is a function and derivative of this is equal to 0, that means all the natural process, uh, they, they always try to, you know, minimize their uh, work okay from initial time ti to tf so that is the main 
uh, advantage of Lagrangian formulation. So, what is the physical significance of the Lagrangian, Lagrangian L? It represents the action of the system, or that means the activeness of a system in a particular condition. So that is why it is called your this action is called your action integral, right? So these things we have to know before starting the Lagrangian formulation. Now, now before starting the Lagrangian formulation, some some parameters, some terminologies we have to know that those terminologies are like you you heard about that you know constraint, right? What do you mean by constraint? Constraint means constraint. You know this constraint means a restriction on a system, restriction imposed on a system. I will say that restriction, restrictions on a system. Right? Okay. You can impose some restriction on a system. So these are the restrictions. So according to the once you solve out the problem, you have to take care of those restrictions also, right? Because if we want to, like a simple example, if you want to go somewhere and you cannot go randomly, there must be some restriction so that to we have to follow those restrictions to get our final destination, right? The similar thing, if I consider a sim, you know, system, physical system here, and if I impose those restrictions, the properties, the characteristics of this system will be changed a little bit. Okay, that is why we have to take care of this restriction constraint. Now, what this is the uh, this is restriction means in our language. Now, in physics, how can you represent this restriction? So those are called you know, you know equation. Equation of constraint. Equation of constraint. So equation of constraint it represents uh, the representation. Equation of constraint means a representation. A representation of constraints. A representation. Math. I mean mathematical representation. So better. We say that mathematical representation, math, mathematical representation. That means mathematics is the language. That is why it is uh, said that mathematics is the language of physics. Now look at this problem. If I take this example, simple pendulum. Now, what is the restriction on this system of this system? What should be the restriction? Now, if the bob is suppose it is oscillating. If the bob is oscillating, so what is the restriction here? Always what is fixed here? You see, the length of this pendulum always it will be fixed. If the length of this pendulum L, if it is not fixed, if it is not constant, then this oscillation will not be a simple, you know, harmonic motion. Because for a small oscillation, simple pendulum give rise to the, you know, simple harmonic motion, simple harmonic oscillation, right? So that is why that this length of the pendulum is fixed during the oscillation. That is the constraint in this case. In this case, now how can that our constraint here that length length is constant. Length of the pendulum it means the uh, length of the this string. Always remember that this length means from the point of suspension to not on the surface of the bob it is the distance from the point of suspension to the center of mass of this bob right so its length is fixed now if i say when the bob is initially here and if i displace the bob and if i you know uh, place it here this point this position is represented by p x and y right so when L is and this point is a point of suspension is O, this is suppose 0, 0 point. So when L is length means L is constant. So what will be the mathematical representation here? So it means that the distance between these two points O and P, it means OP, this distance is constant. And how can you represent this OP? the distance between the two points O and P that will come as 
x square plus y square that is equal to constant. So these things, this representation is called the equation of constant in this case. I hope you got the idea. So in every system that once you have the constant, you can easily define the constant uh, by an equation that is called equation of constant, right? Now, tell me one thing and another thing that every constraint, every constraint, every constraint, every constraint must follow a force that is that that is called force of constraint force of constraint in our life suppose if you are uh, here if you want to go somewhere that if you are not allowed to go in any uh, some uh, some particular direction that must be given by some uh, by someone that is the source those source of constraint is called that is in our particular system in our you know physical life but you see, in case of the problem, that means the constraint must follow the follow the um, uh, follow a force that is called force of constraint. Now, here the constraint is length is fixed, and we have defined the equation of constraint. Now, why this length is fixed during this oscillation? For simple harmonic motion, for simple pendulum, why this L is L is fixed? Why? What tries to make the length of the stream? fixed remember that you see when i say that if i what will be the mass of this ball uh, sorry um, forces what are the forces on this ball one is mg downward okay another will be here tension tensile force and this will be your t cos theta and this will be your t sin theta right now see when the bob is at this point one component of this tensile force will counterbalance by this mg force otherwise if there is suppose no tension this uh, uh, there will be an elongation of the stream but this is not happening because a tensile force is acting and one this component is equal to the mg that is why at every time at this point because it, it, it is um, counterbalancing when the bob is at this point again the t cos theta will counterbalance here when the at this point will t cos theta will counterbalance here again when it is t cos theta will counterbalance here that means this is fixed this l is fixed because although one force is downward but another component of force is equal component of force is upward and that makes the length of the uh, a pendulum is fixed at every point that means during the oscillation and this t sin theta plays the role of no you know force of rest uh, restoring force you got the point so what i say in the case of pendulum in case of in case of you know that simple pendulum simple pendulum the force of constraint force of constraint is the tension tensile force tensile force right here it is acting um, it is the tensile force some other condition the force will be uh, different different kind of force will be there so those forces are called you know the force of constant you got the idea these are the preliminary thing now you see we will always start from the simple pendulum although this pendulum is simple i am saying that this is simple but this is not simple many more information will come out from this simple pen pendulum so all the lagrangian formulation or characteristics some many problem that same time we will discuss about compound pendulum simple pendulum this simple pendulum again if we invert it again if it is supposed oscillating and again you know uh, supporting by oscillating and again uh, or the bob is oscillating so in that case what will be the condition and how can we approach those problems those problems are uh, very very important for csr net examination and uh, other competitive examination now see okay so i hope you got this idea now 
before going to start the Lagrangian formulation, what we need actually, we need uh, that is a very very important terminal that is called degree of freedom, degree of freedom of a system, degree of freedom and another is generalized. So let us say that generalized coordinate, generalized coordinate. Generalized coordinates and degree of freedom. I hope you already know, but here we will discuss in a different way so that the minimum time is required in your examination. Okay, see what do you mean by the generalized coordinate and degree of freedom? Your generalized coordinate means that the minimum uh, number of independent ways, independent coordinates, independent coordinates, coordinates to describe to describe a system. That is called your generalized coordinate means ZC, right? Generalized coordinate. And the numeric number, this numeric number of ZC, generalized coordinate, is called your degree of freedom. Degree of freedom. That means DOF, right? degree of freedom you got a point so the minimum number in lawyer class you got i think like this that, that, that number of way of motion is the degree of freedom here the same thing in different language that the minimum number of independent coordinates to describe the system is called generalized coordinate and that numeric number of that generalized coordinate is called your you know that uh, degree of freedom clear now what is the degree of freedom how can we find out the degree of freedom for different uh, uh, problem you got this point so let us take those case Achha. see uh, okay it was asked in gate examination that find find the degree of freedom degree of freedom means DOF for a rigid body rigid body in D dimension gate question gate question I think gate and this question it was asked I don't remember exactly the year okay so in d dimension now before finding the degree of freedom so i think you heard about this formula right f equal to 3n minus k when this is n is the number of particle number of particles and this k is the number of constraints constraint that is why i introduced the term constraint and this f is the degree of freedom now if I say only one particle is here, okay, so there will be no restriction, there will be no constraint, so your f will be 3 into 1 minus 0 at equal to 3, right? If I say two particles are there and they attach by a constraint, one constraint, this attach line string means it will represent the constraint, so I mean two particles, so 3 into 2 minus 1 constraint that will be 5 that means for 2 particle it will be degree of freedom will be 5 and for 3 particle if I say for 3 particle again 3 particle 1 2 3 so these are the attach okay so it will be 3 into 3 particle number of particles 3 minus a 1 2 3 3 constraints are there 3 3 is are 9 minus 3 equal to 6 the degree of freedom of that uh, system of particle having three particles is six 
Now, if I give that four particles are there, or suppose five particles are there, six, seven, eight, nine particles are there, how many times you will count the constraint? It will be very hard to count the number of constraint because this line will be attached like this, 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 like this, 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 this. Okay, so it will be very hard, difficult to count the number of constraint. Okay, so that is why we don't use, uh, I mean, uh, I don't want to use this formula because this formula, if you, this is for particular case, some, uh, you know, lesser number of particles. But the question is that degree of freedom of a rigid body. Now, rigid body means what? Rigid body contains large number of particles, hundreds, thousands of particles. You don't know. Okay. In that case, you cannot find the degree of freedom using this formula, right? And also, I want to mention the degree of freedom depends on the dimension, uh, dimension also. In which dimension, whether it is 1D, 2D, 3D, you are finding the degree of freedom. Right? Dimension is also necessary. Now, see, these are very hard to calculate, but I have a very simplest way to calculate the degree of freedom for any particle, for one particle, two particle, three particle, and number of particle, uh, you know, that how many dimension, uh, in which dimension, 1D, 2D, 3D, 4D, 5D, in D dimension also. Look at that process, very, very interesting. Very, very interesting, you see, very, very interesting case. Now see, if I first consider that in 3D case, look at this point very, very uh, minutely, see, suppose a three-dimensional case, 3D, three-dimensional space, and if I say one particle is here, so this is X, you know, this is Y, and this is Z, what is the degree of freedom, what you got, that earlier the number of way of motion of that particle, independent is here and if I say the three dimensional sphere three dimensional coordinate system and in that case this particle can move freely along x axis can move freely along y axis can move freely along z axis right so what should be the degree of freedom your degree of freedom here it will be three right the same dimension in 3d case if I take two particles if I take two particles and if I attach by a string or something like this so what will be the degree of freedom for these two particles in 3D? Now, the convenient, very easiest to process is first you count down because we have two particles. Na? First you count the degree of freedom, individual degree of freedom for the first particle. We got it is 3. So here I am writing here 3 for this particle. Now if I bring another particle and if I attach it here, it means along x axis this particle independently cannot move because this is attaching with the first particle. What are the uh, remaining uh, independent direction? This particle can move in y direction, can move in z direction. So for this particle, what will be the independent way of motion to? So degree of freedom for this particle is 2. So now if I consider a system and having two particles, what will be the total degree of freedom? Your DOF is equal to 3 plus 2, that is equal to 5. Okay? And also for one particle we got F equal to 3N minus K from this formula. For one particle we got 3, for two particle we got 5, for three particle we got 6. Okay? And what will be the for uh, four particle, five particle, we, we don't know. Okay, in that case, we cannot find out the number of constant, but here you can find. If I see the same di dimension, if I say three particles are here, three particles are here. Now, for the first particle individual, you calculate the individual degree of freedom for each particle. Okay, so what will be the before bringing these two particle degree of freedom for this particle is three. And if I bring another particle, second particle, what are the degree of freedom for this particle? Already we got that is 2. And if I attach another particle, the third particle here, like this, what will be the degree of freedom? Because this particle now, this time, the third particle cannot move along x axis and along y axis. But what are the, I mean, in three axis, 
two axes are restricted along the two axes the motion of the particle third particle along the two axes are restricted so what will be the another way the remaining ways this particle can move only one remaining axis maybe in uh, z direction so what will be the degree of freedom for this particle it is 1 so degree of freedom for the system of particle having three particles d o f is equal to 3 plus 2 plus 1 that is equal to 6 all you see this 3 one particle one particle we got this 5 we got and this 6 we got now here we could not find out the degree of freedom for fourth particle right that was very hard but here we can find let us see that though that thing again in 3d if I say that for fast particle, similar condition, similar condition, you just take the particles like this, like this. For the fast particle, you can choose any one particle as a fast particle, okay? So for the first particle, the degree of freedom individual, it was 3. For the second particle, it was 2. For the third particle, it was 1. Now this particle is restricted along all the three directions, right? what will be the degree of number of way of motion this particle cannot move in any direction why it is restricted it is attached to all the direction okay that is why the degree of freedom for the fourth particle contribution is zero but what will be the degree of freedom for the system of particle your d o f equal to three plus two plus one plus zero and again you will get six if i consider five particle one two three four five the first particle it is three second particle two third particle one the fourth particle is zero what will be the fifth particle because fifth particle always it is attached it will be attached so this fifth particle always zero that means when the number of particle is greater than the dimension here it is 3d so greater than the third the uh, particles beyond the third particle third particles all the particles have the contribution of degree of freedom zero right here it is degree of freedom for this system of particles three plus two plus one plus zero plus zero that is equal to six now the case is that if i consider a rigid body rigid body in 3d how many particles will be there we don't know maybe 100 maybe 200 maybe 500 but it is saying that the degree of freedom for this uh, rigid body in 3d so for first particle if i consider the first particle in, in this rigid body 3 for the second particle it will be 2 for the third particle it will be 1 for fourth particle the contribution 0 plus 0 for fifth particle plus dot 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 plus 0 right so what will be the sum of this again i will get six now see that we got the degree of freedom for a rigid body in 3d is six but if we don't calculate like this if you use this formula in that case it is very hard to calculate the number of constraint so if you follow this process any uh, calculation you can do uh, very easily right now look at the point this is these are considered 3d now so if it is 2d if it is suppose x and y axis this is x axis and y axis if the first particle is here how many ways you can it can move so two ways so your d o f is equal to two and if i say that two particles are there here for first particle it will be two for second particle it will be one because one along one axis it is restricted okay so it will be DOF will be you know that 2 plus 1 equal to 2 plus 1 equal to 3 and that th if I consider 3 particle so for first particle it will be 2 for second particle it will be 1 for third particle it cannot move because it is somewhere it is attaching with the two axes so this contribution will be 0 so your DOF is equal to 2 plus 1 plus 0 again it will be 3 so for the degree of freedom for a rigid body what it will be for a rigid body many number of particles for first particle 2 then second particle 1 then the third particle 0 plus 0 plus dot 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 plus 0 again it will get 3 right so in this way we can find out the degree of freedom for rigid body in 2d 3d in 1d also similarly for 1d 1d 
only one dimensional uh, you know that case so if only one particle this particle is fixed and b o f i mean this particle can move in only one direction it will be one if i consider that 2d two particles for this particle it will be one but for this particle it cannot independently move so it will be zero so one plus zero it will be one and again if i similarly consider a rigid body in 1d so what will be the degree of freedom because for first particle of the rigid body one for second particle zero plus zero plus dot 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 plus zero that means you can say this rigid body a massive body suppose this uh, this this you know that marker pen there is that how many particles will be there we don't know so this body is it is restricted if i say this body can move only in x direction what will be the degree of freedom only one so that is why it is one now the condition that we have got 1d 2d 3d but if there is 4d if there is suppose for a five dimension is a six dimensional you know coordinate systems are there seven dimensional that is why the question was a d dimension this is a general case d dimension what will be the value of d we don't know maybe 100 maybe 200 but we can find out the degree of freedom for the rigid body for many particles in d dimension how look at this point now tell me one thing that when the number of here we uh, calculated for 3d case na? so when the number of particle is greater than the dimension what are the contributions of degree of freedom that is zero contribution suppose you see in d dimension in d dimension in d dimension in d dimension so we don't know what will be the d in d dimension the d o f for a rigid body for a consider a rigid body here and in d dimension what will be the d we don't know this dimension is you know that d i will say that d because we cannot draw the dimension what will be the d we don't know general case for first particle if i consider the first first particle what will be the degree of freedom now you see when it was a 3d case now when it was a 3d case if i consider the first particle it was equal to the dimension right when i consider the second particle it was uh, lesser than one for a, it was 3d but for the second particle it is two that means three minus one this two i can write three minus one for a third particle this in 3d so 3 minus 2 is equal to 1 right in this way here for the fourth particle 3 minus 3 that is what e equal to 0 similarly for the first particle of this rigid body your d o f will be equal to the dimension your d plus for the second particle it will be d minus 1 here we got like this 3 minus 1 it is in 3d it is in d d, uh, d dimension plus for third particle it will be d minus 2 that means it is decreasing by 1 if i consider more and more particle it will decrease by 1 and 1 okay for the fourth particle it will be d minus 3 for the fifth particle it will be d minus you know 4 plus dot 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 up to what we will get up to what we will get when this particle if i consider that the particle all the particle having that means d we don't know suppose d is 100 if i consider 101 part number of particle that 102 number of particle all the contribution degree of freedom contribution will be zero that means we are calculating this 3 3 minus 1 3 minus 2 3 minus 3 then the rest of the particle degree of freedom will be zero it means that d d minus 1 d minus 2 d minus 3 d minus 4 plus dot 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 plus and it is decreasing it will decrease up to zero right that three plus no two plus one plus zero it means it will decrease up to zero right and what will be the rest of the zero we don't want to write what will be the this summation can we find out the summation of this you know sequence of this series it will be your d into d plus one divided by 2 so this question was asked in gate examination very very important formula and from using this condition you can find out the degree of freedom for any particle rigid body in 
you know various dimension you got the point now look at you want to verify it if there is one particle if there is one particle right so we got the rigid body for a rigid body in two dimension uh, in three dimension we got six right and in two dimension we got three for one dimension you got one right similarly say, let's verify it. if i say that rigid body for you know three dimension if it, it, it will be d it will be three d and d plus one so when d is equal to three it will be three into three plus one four three into three plus one divided um, it is four divided by two it will be two three two are six it is verified so when d equal to suppose two d equal to two so d equal to two and two plus one means three so two into three divided by two two to cancel it is three equal when d is equal to one if i say d equal to one you put here uh, it will be one multiplied by one plus one means two divided by two two to cancel it will be one so it is verified so in this way you can find out the degree of freedom uh, for any dimension for you know large number of particles for rigid body so i hope this is the simplest way to calculate the degree of freedom and this question was asked in gate examination okay now i hope you got the idea how to find out the degree of freedom now let us take the generalized condition once you have the degree of freedom okay you got the question you can write down you can pause it and you can write down see in csr examination this is online posting examination and i don't want to sit just to solve out the previous years for uh, you know problem so once you once i solved the previous year problem only you know that how to solve those problems but you will not know, able to know that other problem how to solve the other problem and in csr examination the question will not be repeated so that is why I'm, i want to give you the idea the concept behind all those questions the questions so that you can you can approach the other questions also okay that is why it is very very important now the thing is now let's move to the lagrangian formulation lagrangian formulation now suppose you have a question you have a question okay that find the time period time period time period of simple pendulum simple pendulum using i am mentioning here that using lagrangian formulation lagrangian formulation formulation or using lagrangian equation of motion because we are approaching to Lag lagrangian uh, dynamics okay now if you have this question what it will you will do so that is why that is called i want to say that steps steps for solving physical problem physical problem using you know lagrangian lagrangian equation these are what are the step what you will do your first step if once you see the problem once you read the problem that means first step what will you will do first you will see the problem right see and you will draw the problem okay then it means if i say that this problem is given what i will make sure i will sure that i will, uh, will try to you know uh, i will see the problem i will try to draw the picture of the problem right like if it is theta it is l okay it is a simple pendulum okay once we have drawn the problem then what you will do you will do you will find the dof degree of freedom now what will be the dof of this case for simple pendulum always remember that degree of freedom for a particular system it is fixed for everyone but our choice of generalized coordinate it, it may differ you can choose any uh, other coordinates any coordinates uh, 
uh, as a generalized coordinate for a particular problem right how you see here if i say this point is suppose p x and y what will be d o f of degree of freedom for a simple pendulum one right one now if it is one that what will be the how many generalized coordinates will be there degree of freedom is one but generalized code what is i know varying here when the bob is coming like this so this angular displacement will change sato sat x and y position coordinate will change that means theta can be generalized coordinate or you know x also can be the generalized coordinate or y is also can be the generalized coordinate but degree of freedom is one but choice of generalized coordinate it is different someone can take theta someone can x someone can y someone can x someone can take you know can take y also this is different but we will use here the generalized coordinate in such a way that the calculation is you know very easy so here we will say that generalized coordinate for this case is equal to suppose theta let us take theta so it is already we have done so now the third condition is that choose the generalized coordinate already we have chosen here now the fourth step you know that find the relation of choosed generalized coordinates with the other coordinates coordinates other coordinates means x and y so we have to find out the relation of theta with the x with x and y now how can we find out see so this will be from here to here from here to here it will be p x and y it means see from here to here it is y and from here to here it is x so what will be the y you know y will be you know this is l this is l so if i uh, use the a uh, law it will be uh, that l cos theta and this x will come x equal to l sin theta so you have got the relation theta with x theta with y right now once i have the relation i will find out that x dot x dot square plus y dot square now what is this x dot now see these are the position coordinate right if i take that position coordinate and if i take the uh, you know time derivative of the position coordinate it will represent the velocity if i take two times differentiation with respect to t it will give acceleration acceleration right so remember these things because why we are going to find out the x square plus x dot square plus y square because first we have to find out the lagrangian and is lagrangian equal to t minus v and this t is half of m v square right so this v square means this is x square plus x dot square plus y dot square it means v square so once i have v square then and find find kinetic energy that is equal to t equal to half of m x dot square plus y dot square right now once i have the kinetic energy six number that i have to find out the potential energy now potential energy always measured from a reference point from a reference point one can measure the potential clear now that is why i have to set a reference level of potential so that is called set of set a reference level of potential energy here if i set the reference level or potential energy that means zero reference level i have to put so if i say that this is our potential energy zero level from here we will find out the uh, potential energy of the bob or another system res uh, with respect to this zero level now once i have the potential energy level uh, set the potential energy then find the v v we can find out then once i have that v i can find out the l equal to t minus v 
and once I uh, found the L equal to T minus V, then we can solve solve Lagrangian equation of motion. This equation of motion means this is d upon dt del l upon del q dot. This q means position coordinate. A q dot means this velocity coordinate. Here I am taking, uh, if I take x, it will be x dot. If I take y, it will be y dot. If I take theta, it will be theta dot. That depends on the condition. Minus del l by del q. That equal to 0. And if I put the l value here, and if I try to solve, that will be the complete solution given by the um, uh, Lagrangian formulation, Lagrangian equation function. These are the steps. So here I am writing this step so that once you follow this step, so the common mistakes uh, in your examination will be minimized. Once you are expert in those problems, no need to uh, you know, remember these things. Already, already uh, you will get to know that what we, you have to do. Okay? So you write these things. Okay. Now let us solve the problem. What is our problem? I will see, follow all these things. So we already got the degree of freedom is one generalized coordinate we choose as theta. Now what will be the next step is we have to find out that x dot is square plus y dot is square, right? So if x equal to here, but x equal to you know that uh, it is uh, l cos theta, l sin theta. If I take x dot, what will be the let us first x dot. x dot means L is fixed. We are deriving this equation with respect to time. So L and sin theta derivative, it will be cos theta, but we are not derivating with respect to theta. We are derivating with respect to t. That is why theta dot. And what about y dot will be L. What about our cos theta derivation? It will be minus sin theta and again theta dot. Right? Now, x dot is square plus y dot is square will come as you know that l is square cos is square theta and theta dot is square plus l is square sine square theta plus theta dot is square. this minus sign will uh, be plus sign here because once we square it so it will be l is square theta dot is square cos is square theta plus sine square theta and you know this formula is one so l is square theta dot is square now we have got this velocity. What will be the kinetic energy? T equal to half of m v square. This is v square. So L square theta dot square. Once I have this kinetic energy, now what I have to find out? I have to find out the potential. I have to set the potential reference level. So we already set. But what will be the potential energy? You see, what will be the potential energy here? Now we see that here. Again, remember that if I say this is the zero potential level and if you are, you know, below the zero potential level, your potential energy V is already, we know that M, Z into N height. But you are, we are not going upward direction, we are going downward direction. So this Y, what I have to take, I have to take here Y as a minus sign. So this means minus sign you have to consider minus, it will be your m minus mg minus mg and l cos theta right these things we have to take care now once i have the you know potential energy and minus uh, kinetic energy now l will be your minus half of m l square theta dot square and l minus t na? So this minus and minus will be plus mgl cos theta, right? This is our Lagrangian. Sometime in your examination, the Lagrangian can get, then you have to find out the Lagrangian. Now, what is Lagrangian we got? What will be the generalized coordinate here? Theta. So what I have to do, that Lagrangian equation of motion, d upon dt, del l upon del generalized velocity. It will be velocity coordinate is theta minus del l upon del theta that is equal to zero 
it means you see that d upon dt what i can say that del l by del theta the theta dot so i have to derivative you have to take the differentiation with respect to theta dot but here it is not given any theta dot so the contribution for this will be the zero so here i will get 2m this 2 will come and this 2 2 will cancel each other m l square theta dot m l square theta dot right minus minus then again i have to take the differentiation with respect to theta but here it is no theta is here so the contribution for here it will be zero and for this m g l m g l what will be the differentiation with respect to theta or cos theta it is minus sine theta sine theta a minus sine that will make it positive equal to zero you got the idea now the thing is okay m l square is a constant right m l square is a constant now again d upon d t uh, and theta dot so what it will be theta double dot plus m g l sin theta is equal to zero now see m if i read uh, m and l if i uh, divide this equation by m and l it will be both side it will be you know l uh, theta double dot plus uh, g sin theta is equal to zero so your theta double dot plus g by l sin theta will be zero okay now for a small oscillation if i say that for small oscillation your sin theta is equal to theta right so in that case theta double dot plus z upon l theta at equal to zero and that means theta double dot equal to minus z upon l theta is equal to zero now look at this point that this theta is what displacement and theta double dot represents the acceleration and this z by l is a constant right l is fixed z is a gravitational constant so this is a uh, this factor this term is a cons factor is a constant it means your acceleration if i remove the sign you know equal sign acceleration negative displacement is proportional to the negative displacement this is the main condition for simple harmonic motion it means for small oscillation for small oscillation a simple pendulum motion will be a simple harmonic motion you got the idea but the condition when theta is small that is why sometimes in your practical laboratory we always took that theta maximum below 4 degree like this or less than 4 degree because if i take for higher view then sine theta will not be theta and in that case it will not um, perform as a simple harmonic motion i hope you already know now the thing is that not our aim is to find out a time period this theta double dot if i say uh, if i put here that omega square theta is equal to zero where your omega square is equal to z upon l and your omega equal to under root z upon l so now see this equation this equation is a second order differential equation you can solve this question you can solve this equation right so if taking that omega equal to z upon l it will represent the angular frequency angular frequency of this oscillation now we know that the angular frequency is represented by angular frequency omega is represented with time period that two omega t equal to t equal to 2 pi by omega now if i put here omega value na, omega value then it will be uh, you know that z upon l and if you take in the numerator 2 pi under root l upon z so this is the our aim to find out the pro to solve out this problem the time period of the simple pendulum depends on l z l and z also and this is a constant now this time this time this l is constant z is also fixed if the pendulum is in vacuum condition now what i am saying i am solving this and i am saying that this formula this type of problem will not ask in csr examination why 
they are because they want to know that the concept behind the problem they will additionally disturb you on that problem they will impose you some condition and they will try to uh, you know so ask you the question so keeping this all concept in our mind because i am taking time because we are understanding because we are understanding the problem so once we understand the problem you see now our main aim will call at what type of question can be asked in csr examination that will be like this remember okay so we got that pendulum here that pendulum here like this theta l and what is the time period t equal to we got for when it is a vacuum t equal to twice by under root l upon z right now if i say that if the pendulum is suppose inside a lift or in an elevator and the lift is moving upward with an acceleration a then what will be the time period of that pendulum of that simple pendulum it means uh uh if the pendulum you can say uh is placed inside a lift and the lift is moving upward with acceleration a then what will be the time period then what will be the time period will it be same or will it be different let us take different question when the pendulum is placed inside a lift now the simplest idea that uh, in a lawyer class that means is uh, high secondary we discussed uh, you heard about the newton's law of motion okay uh for some time let us uh take a different case so that it will be very easy to understand this problem you see suppose you are here suppose a person or you are here and on the floor what will be the actually uh you know net force acting on this person one will be i uh, know weight of this person downward another force will come as the normal reaction so when we are standing on the floor this normal reaction is equal to the mg this means its normal reaction is nothing but the apparent weight this apparent weight is equal to the actual weight that is why we are you know a normal we can stand otherwise what will happen you see you can think that if you so okay suppose a stone if i uh, you know pour inside in a water container it will go down the similar thing so if i if we standing on a floor and why do why we are not penetrating the soil why we are not penetrating you know the floor why it is happening remember that we don't feel never we don't feel uh, any time the actual weight of a person of of us clear what we feel actually we feel actually the normal reaction that is why we cannot uh, you know say that we, we can move you know very smoothly on a floor but if the floor is disturbing if the floor suppose it is disturbing then you will feel that because at that moment your apparent weight normal reaction and uh, your actual force will not be same let us take so when it is just in this case it will be same that is why a person normally can work on the floor but if you are here inside a lift and the lift is moving upward with a direction a with acceleration a then what will be the uh, uh, um, what will be the apparent weight so you see one force will come mg another force will come r but the lift is also moving upward then you also you are also moving with upward direction right so what will be the your net force upward direction so your f net will be upward direction but you see if this is also upward direction so r and it is downward direction if i want to find out along upward direction it will be your minus mg right 
but f net will be your m into m your, because your mass will be same here acceleration of that uh, you know lift and acceleration acceleration uh, of u will be same that is m a equal to r minus mg now from here you can say m into z plus a z plus a. it means your apparent weight this time is greater than by m into a of your actual weight mg right so that is why sometimes when uh, you are you know that uh, lift you are inside a lift and then this lift is moving upward so in that case for a normal work on the floor a person need more effort for normal work okay that is why the condition or you see the same thing will happen here here i have taken person here it is a pendulum now what will be the condition here that mg will come here and another restoring force will be along this direction what will be the gravity so you see this is nothing but mass you know and this z plus is z plus a it is nothing but gravity but this gravity so m z dash i will say z dash this is apparent gravity experienced by you z plus a apparent z dash equal to z plus a so it means the gravity will not be constant depending on the situation uh, will not be constant in any situation it will depend on the situation that is why when or simply just if, if you don't want to write down this case now just you think you are inside a lift and lift if it's moving upward what do you feel that you are gaining the weight right if you are gaining the weight it means your mass will be fixed always but you are gaining the weight means you will feel that you are gaining the weight means the gravity effective gravity will be there that means your gravity that uh, z will be not equal to the z z will be greater than the actual z that is why your apparent weight is greater than the actual weight. that is why you are feeling that more you are gaining the weight right that is why you see when the pendulum is here now the same condition you can calculate like this it will be your z dash will be z plus a so in that case what will be the time period tell me what will be the time period in this case the time period equal to 2 pi under root l upon not z it will be z plus a the time period will be same uh, not will not be same it will uh, be changed not a condition when the lift is moving if i say the lift is moving downward or just like this you are inside a lift and the lift is moving downward what do you feel that you are losing you, you you will feel that you are losing your weight that is why when you are coming downward and the lift is also coming downward a person if you want to uh, walk on the floor and uh, you the person will need less effort to for uh, less effort for normal one that is the condition that is why actually so when it is coming downward to the, uh, the acceleration a that in that case your z dash will be not z plus a it will be z minus a how how you see look at this condition same thing it is coming along downward direction your f net you see your mg downward f net will be downward condition it will be r mg is also downward that is why i have taken positive r is upward it will be minus so uh, m a equal to m z minus r is equal to you know r equal to m into z minus of a will come this is the effective gravity right that is why the same condition if i replace u by an pendulum the same that effective gravity will be a z minus a in that case in that case your t will be 2 pi under root of l and z minus a when the lift is moving downward in this case the time period will be this and when it is upward it is this now tell me one thing when the lift is upward lift is moving upward and the pendulum is there the time period will increase or decrease here when it is upward in the denominator we are adding something right if it is denominator adding something that makes this time period decrease right but when the pendulum is uh, you know it is coming downward okay in that case z minus a 
from z you are uh, subtracting that means you are in decreasing the denominator it means that will make the time period increase clear okay now when then there suppose free fall when suppose you are inside a lift and the lift is you know falling freely what you will feel in that case you feel that you are losing your weight that means you have lost all your weight that will sometimes people used to do vomit okay so in that case what happen actually when it is free fall in this case your z is equal to a it is directly equal to because i am say if i say it is freely falling like this because of z this is coming and also you are coming free falling that means you are coming with an acceleration that is equal to z so in this case is z equal to z that z dash equal to 0 that is why your apparent weight will be r equal to m into z dash but z dash equal to 0 it means your apparent weight is 0 when your apparent weight is 0 you will feel that you are weightless that is the main condition now this type of problem can be asked in CSI reduction. So what we got from all this calculation, we can write down a note that this Z is not fixed. It will depend on the situation. Now we see whether this L is fixed or not. Look at that condition. Whether the L is fixed or not. Or another condition, you see, if when z is not constant or no, z, whether it is constant or so, see, let us take another condition whether in this case, case z is fixed or not. If a car is moving along this direction with acceleration a, and you have set a the pendulum inside the car, inside the car, this is the car. Now, in this case, what will be the time period? Now, look at this condition, when the car is moving along this direction, this pendulum, this bob will feel an acceleration along this direction, right? And also this bob will feel an acceleration due to gravity, it is z. But what will be the effective z? What will be the time period? You see, for effective z, if I say this is a vector quantity acceleration, right? So it will be your z dash equal to under root of, you know, z square plus a square. So if I try to solve the result in z, it will be under root of z square plus a square. So in this case, your t equal to twice by under root of l divided by z square plus a square, right? That means when you place a pendulum inside a car and car is moving with an acceleration in this direction, in that case also, that z, <coughs> your time period will not be same. And at what point this bob will be fixed? At what point this bob will be fixed? You see, if I say this is bob and this is along a, a and this is a, a z and this. So if I, using the parallel, if this angle is theta, this angle will be also theta. So what will be the theta? That means if I say tan theta equal to, so it, it will be a, so a upon z, your theta equal to tan inverse a upon z. It means when theta is equal to tan inverse a upon z, at that time the bob will be equilibrium. So this is the point of point of equilibrium. Right? Another condition we can make. Another condition. Suppose if I this time uh, suppose uh, you know the same pendulum but the bob I am taking as a charge particle having charge Q and mass M. And if the pendulum is placed in a, mag a, a, a in an electric field having electric field intensity that is E along this direction, then what will happen? Whether the time period will be same or different? Mass is same, but instead of that bob, I am taking a charge particle. Now in this case, your T, what will be the? You see, when the bob it is just it will act as a charge particle. When the air is a charge particle, and if I apply a electric field, this part charge particle will experience a force that is equal to Q E, and the direction of the force and the direction of A will be along the direction of the electric field. So it means if I say mass of the charge particle, this when this charge particle will experience a force along this direction, this charge particle will experience an acceleration along this direction. 
it will be q and e so your a, a, a is equal to q e upon m so your this acceleration will be along this direction another is that this charged particle will experience a uh, acceleration because of gravity so this again if i draw it the parallelogram if i use the parallelogram law what will be the effective z your z dash will be under root of z square plus you know q e upon m q e upon m whole square so therefore time period t will be twice pi you know l divided by under root of z square plus q e upon m whole square you see this type of question can be asked in csl very very important question these are the very very important question you will not see this type of problem in any book now so from this calculation we can say that this z is not fixed we have to count the effective value of z depending on the situation okay now let us take the condition whether l is fixed or not you see the same condition l is here clear now instead of this bob okay this is theta this is l if i say this bob what i mentioned this l means the distance from the point of suspension to the center of mass of this bob right when if i say this is a hollow sphere suppose a hollow sphere hollow sphere under copla okay hollow sphere okay then the time period will be just like this because from here to here the l will be fixed now if i say if i if that means isko main kya karunga thoda sa hole kar dunga okay so if i break the bob it means if i suppose pour some water inside the bob if i pour some water inside the bob up to this point up to this point up to this point then what will be the time period of this pendulum are you getting what i am uh, actually trying to say that this bob is if i say it is a hollow bob and if i make a hole and if i pour some water inside the bob but the bob is oscillating okay bob is oscillating and if i pour some water and this time if it is oscillating what will be the time period whether the time period will be same or different very very interesting question see the time period will be different because you see when i say i just I just to mention that length of the pendulum means from the point of suspension distance from the point of suspension to the center of mass of the bob right when i pour some water this time in the center of mass of this bob will be shifted to somewhere like this at this point when it is shifting downward it means this l is increasing right suppose if it is shifted by x so this time the l dash effective length will be l plus x so this time your this time your the time period l plus x but z is fixed because we are not putting inside an any an, an other condition okay now if i pour some pour water fully inside the bob then what will happen if i pour water fully inside the bob then again in this case the center of mass will be in the middle of the bob in that case the time period will be same but if i pour water you know not fully not fully then in this case the center of mass will be same that is why the effective length of the pendulum will be same this type of problem can be asked in csr examination so from all this calculation what i can say that this t is nothing but t equal to it will be the effective length effective length and this will be the effective gravity gravity so this formula we have to remember directly you cannot say this formula will be correct in any condition so this formula we have to remember 
depending on the situation whether it is you know uh, putting in another condition or you are putting this uh, so whether the center of mass is shifting or not this type of problem can be asked so this is our uh, the first class here we have discussed the simple i said earlier that the although the simple pendulum it is simple but it is not a simple case many more problems we can discuss from this maybe in the next class i can uh, say that okay this it is oscillating but if the point of suspension if this suspension it is also oscillating like this it is also if it is oscillating in that case what will be the time period whether it will be same or different so those type of questions are very very important for csr net examination and the tfr examination you got my point so this is our first class for online uh, coaching for physical science conducted by me so uh, many students are joining and remember that i have a limited number i have only i have limited the number of students uh, more than 20 i will not take more than 20 students so uh, if you like so many more problem we will discuss in those classes this is the first class this is our the demo class okay you can say it is a demo class this type of problem we will discuss and many more shortcut shortcut tricks we will discuss how can we uh, solve out those problems using the conceptual also once you know the concept then we can go for the you know the tricky points those tricky points will come later those things we will uh, discuss in the classroom online classroom so if you want to if you say that this is the very very important and if you register the registration link i provide it and you can join in the online net coursing so thank you uh, for all so here i have discussed in english all uh, but sometime i can um, i will speak in uh, hindi okay so 50% it will depend on the participant whether they feel comfortable in hindi or english so uh, or mix up so it will depend on the participants so i will take the con uh, i will consult with the participants so but the thing is that we have to understand we have to language is not a case the case is we have to understand the concept behind the physics behind the problem okay so that is why many problem uh, we will take but the thing always remember that once you if i solved only one problem the previous year's question i you or you will be uh, knowing only the problem the solution of the problem you will not know the other you know concept but if i discuss if you discuss in this way and uh, the, of course the classes will be very lengthy so and six month duration so i hope the maximum topics uh, i will cover uh, let's see so thank you for all of you so if you like the class you can join and you can you know share with your friends to join so thanks to all of you thank you